the only, Mr. Hardeep Singh Kohli. <laughs> Give the Scotsman a mic. That's how I know I'm Scottish. Give me a mic and I want to sing. Or I am a sing. (laughs) (laughs) Nippy sing. That's what you think of it. It's either Nippy sing or the postman of EastEnders. That's, That's all I ever get. In the heaving metropolis that is London, I can always find myself a mini India, and I love that. Because although I was born in the UK, my Indian heritage is very important to me. But it's only part of who I am. The other half of me is Scottish. I grew up in Glasgow, spent most of my adult life there, and I love being from Scotland. I'm Scottish, I'm Sikh, I'm British. I've got no problem with that, and if I've got no problem with it, why should anyone else? (laughs) But some people seem to think that just because I wear a turban, or maybe because I have darker skin than them, that I can't really be British. I'm amazed at how often people I meet presume I'm a foreigner. A good-looking foreigner, but a foreigner. I would like you, through this pictorial representation, so tell me where you think I come from. I could go for the obvious common small one answer. I could say Afghanistan, can I? But no. I, I reckon you're a bit, you're a bit more than that. I think it's more to you than that. In Azerbaijan? Yeah. Right, I'm from Glasgow. Did my accent not kind of give it away that I might be from Britain? Look, listen, <laughs> sense, feel. Where have you put it? I don't know, in India somewhere. Do you think I'm from India? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Do I sound like I come from India? No, not really. Why Britain? Because you've got a very British accent, and I I would guess you've lived here quite a long time. India or Pakistan, I'm not sure which. Okay, so shall I put it on there for you? Why do you think I come from there? Because he was wearing a stuff. Yes. Shall I show you where I really come from? Yeah. I come from there. See, Glasgow. (laughs) I do. (laughs) I come from Glasgow. Why does that make you laugh? Uh, sorry, I just... No, no, don't apologise. It's not quite possible. Yeah. It is. Where would you... you, you do I, I look Scottish, don't I? You do. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's enough to be born here, to be British? Or do you think there's more to it than that? Oh, more to it than that. What would you not say? Just well, you've got to observe our culture. You come in from abroad, or your family did, then you mm. want to, when, you get, when you get here, you want to observe what you find mm. and follow it. That's what you want to do. And do you feel that happens? No, it doesn't happen. No. Is being born here enough to be British, do you think? The problem with that is, if a cat goes into a stable and gives birth to kittens, are they automatically horses? See, that is the question. Meow. I'll take that as a no, then. Oh, I'm dizzy now. I was expecting the unexpected, but that was even more unexpected than the unexpected, which is incredibly unexpected. Um, so few people thought I might be British. Perish the thought, this man could be from Britain. From Afghanistan, yes. From Iraq, yes. From Uzbekistan, one person tried it. I kicked them very hard, put them right. Cambodia. Some people seem confused about how a brown man fits into a white nation. But I'm not a brown man who's easily put off. So, I believe if you live in a country, you've got to make it your own. Get to the very heart of it. Own it. You'll never guess what I'm going to do. Hey, nonny, no, no, no. Hey, nonny, yes. Yes, yes. Are you ready? Morris dancing. It's as English as I don't know. Skegness and cucumber sandwiches with the crusts cut off. And bizarrely, it's rather fun. Charlie, good show. You look like you've got to see. That's what we do. I've got, I, I am familiar with your earth ways. 
that should such pastimes be the preserve of white folks of this nation? Or is anyone welcome to join in, even if he wears a turban? Let's ask Keith. He's a Morris man. White English culture is important. It, it, it's part of our national makeup. It's part of our being. I mean, I consider myself to be a pure Anglo-Saxon. Uh, by celebrating my culture, by celebrating my dance, by celebrating my custom, by celebrating our traditions, we therefore get to know ourselves. And I think by knowing myself and knowing what I am, I can see where I fit in the world. And therefore, I can appreciate everybody else's culture. Where do I fit into that? I think you fit in as anybody else would fit in. You're a member of this nation, why shouldn't you fit in? I'm not white and I'm not English. And I'm not very cultured. <laughs> you're not white, you're not English. Does it matter? How do you feel about a multiracial Britain? I think it's fantastic. Because it really is a way. Provided we genuinely celebrate each other for what we are, and appreciate each other for what we are, and realise that nobody's better than anybody else. We're just different. I mean, you speak very passionately, Keith, about trying to uphold these traditions and these cultures, and it seems to me one way we could do that is by imposing English traditions and education on people of all races and nationalities to give them a sense of this country. So impose Morris dancing on Muslim kids, on Sikh kids, on Croatian kids. Well, I, don't, I think imposing is too much, isn't it? Don't you? I mean, I, I mean to, to have it there, to have it available, to have it within the curriculum, to not be afraid of it, Yes, I think that's fantastic, but no, never impose it. I mean, it must always be a choice, surely. I don't know, actually. If it's so important for English people to learn about their own history and traditions, surely, in a way, it's even more important that people from outside have respect for this country. I can see that. I can see that, but I still don't think it should be imposed. But it's also be a two-way process. I mean, we need to understand you, too. Yeah, I'll try and speak more clearly. I've, I've got a terrible <laughs> habit of rushing my words and using slang. I think my moves are hot. Yeah, baby, I'm a natural at this. And why shouldn't a Sikh join in traditional English pastimes? The English eat our curry, after all. Shouldn't we share and share alike? But how far should a person go to blend in? I don't think anyone should have to give up their roots to be considered British, even if they were born in another country. I'm heading north, north to Newcastle, to meet a man who disagrees. Abdul Latif was born in Bangladesh, but came to England as a young man. He fell in love with the country, and has strived to become more English than the English. He even bought himself a title as Lord of the Manor. Now he can call himself Lord Harpal! What fun! What better day to meet this red-blooded patriot than St. George's Day itself, the National Day of England. <sighs> now, I'm all for embracing British culture, but there's a big problem here, because I think he's rejected his Bangladeshi background altogether. So, you're 100% British? I am 100% British. Which means you're that. not Bangladeshi at all. Well, I born Bangladesh, but I brought yeah, up but, here. Yeah, yeah but in, yeah. if you're 100%... British, you can't be anything else. No, 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 no. Tell me, why did you buy your lordship? Because I love the British. I love the British people. I like the British system. I like the British country. And I like to hold the British uh, history. So I thought I would spend some money to make the history in the world. I was the first Bangladeshi lord of the manor because I love it so much. How much did it cost you? <laughs> Just about 7,000 pounds. Think about it, you cast for that money. No, a British no, no. car. No, 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 no. Why do you love this country so much? We have best political system in this country. We have freedom here. We have honesty here. We look after people. We care about the people. Than any, any other country in the world. So you don't, have, you don't experience any racism here? Oh, yes, yes. You but do experience racism? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. You experience racism? Yes. A lot of racism? A lot, yes, yes. But you still, one group of people, they don't like us. They don't like the foreigner. That's fine. You're a foreigner, as far as they're concerned. No, no. Can... They're concerned I'm foreigner. Yeah. Right? But I don't feel I'm a foreigner. Yeah, I feel I I'm British. I know, but see, this is what I'm trying to get at. You see, this is what I'm trying to understand. Okay, what, we, what you and I feel in our hearts, sort of irrelevant. It sort of doesn't matter. Because when we walk down the street, when we go for jobs, when we're in a car, when we're in shops, our race, our identity is different. They don't regard us as being part of them. Now, you say to me that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. 
But actually, your lordship, it matters what other people think. No, it doesn't. No, you are wrong. It doesn't matter what these people are think. If you love and if you care about this country, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, one of the most bizarre days of my life. I'm still absolutely confused about his um, position in life. Uh, but that um, doesn't appear to stop him bringing me Indian food and a naan with the St. George's Cross painted on the top. I think people do a great deal more for the furtherance of causes of race and identity if they embrace both sides of who they are. Hello, welcome to Britain. Where, where, are, you, where are you from? Uh, from Sudan. Sudan. Yeah. And this, uh, how long have you been in Britain? We arrived just today. Really? Yeah. New ones. Yeah. And did you know that you've come on a special day? It's St. George's Day. It's the National Day of England. Did you know this? No, no, I don't know that. He just come by. Really? He's, there's yeah, a big dragon. And he was on a horse with a sword and he killed the dragon and everyone went away. And it was, and then they ate, they barbecued the dragon and they ate the dragon. Clearly, my work here is done. Wicked! Yeah, my wow. They're on a mission, you know. On the program, I can't I've lived in Britain all my life. My parents, my aunts, my uncles have lived and worked here for 40 years. My friends live here. My children go to school here. And I dance like I come from here. This is my country. But not every child of an immigrant feels the same way. I'm going to meet a guy who's always been a bit of a hero of mine. He's a political activist and a musician who's always been big on bringing culture together. So it seems a bit of a shame that we're about to disagree on, well, just about everything. Ah, Salam alaikum. How are you? Hello. This is Lela. Hello, Lela. And this is Mohammed. Hello. Aki's family came from Pakistan to Bradford when he was just three years old. Aki's lived here all his life. But I'm not sure that he wants his kids to grow up as British. Aki, do you regard yourself as British? No, I don't want to regard myself. Why should I? Who, who tells me I have to be British to be accepted? But you've not always felt this way, because you know you were you were a bit of a hero and a bit of a visionary to to us lot that were coming up behind you. Do you know what I mean? You know, from my perspective now, I'm saddened. I'm actually saddened. I think that this country, this host nation, has really let us down, and and, and it should be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. The host nation should be embarrassed that we haven't managed after so long to kind of live side by side. And a lot of that blame has been put onto our communities where we people have said, you, ha you can't integrate, you won't integrate your cultures and all this. And I, I believe the issue is not our communities, it's Britain that has not moved on from their prejudices and I don't want to be a part of their ignorance. But if you don't feel British, then what do you have invested in this country? It's like, it's like being a tenant in a rented house. You know and I know. If you're just renting a place, you care about it less than if you own it. I'll tell you something that happened to me that sort of really set me off on this. I was in Soho where I work in London, and um, as I walked by I saw a white woman, she lit a cigarette throwing her foil and the wrapping of a cigarette paper onto the ground. And I hate littering. So I said to the woman, I said, do you know, it was easier for you to put that in the dustbin. And she said to me, F off back to your own country. I'm like, what, Scotland? We've got litter there too. Yeah, but you know what she meant. I know exactly what she meant. But that's my point. I need to say to people, no, I'm not from outside. I'm from here. And I demand this. I demand you to accept that I am from here. Well, you can go on your, you know, you can go on your knees requesting that. And, I'm not. You know, I'm not and, requesting and, 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 it. I'm because, demanding listen, like, it. You know, no. You can demand it as much as we demanded it, and we went on our knees and we requested it. I'm not. You know, I'm not demeaning you. I'm telling you that our parents did it. We did it in our generation. You did it in your generation. There's two or three generations after us who were doing that and have done that, and all respect to them. 
But this nation does not want... When she said go back home, she didn't mean Glasgow. I can't be responsible for how other people think unless I'm first responsible for how I think. I am British because I was born here. Okay. You can you, you can want the need to be as British as much as you want, and I can accept you as wanting that. But it doesn't matter how much British you want to be, how much you're going to contribute. If it came to the crunch, you know, you're not British. I have to confess, I'm saddened by the way Aki feels. But I can't disagree that racism is still a huge barrier in this country. And I can't blame anyone for deciding they've had enough. You will be British! No, I will not! You will be British! I will not! I'm Scottish anyway, I don't really care. Oh, come on, come on. It's alright, I, I didn't say you have to be British. You don't have to cry. Listen, I completely understand where Aki's coming from. I do. But personally, I think the battle's being won, albeit slowly. But I do think things are changing for the better. It's when you come to inner cities like this, you see, places like this, people from all sorts of racial backgrounds have grown up together. They've played together, they've danced together, they've gone out with each other, they're in bands together, they hang out together. They're just together. And I wonder whether in this sort of mix of cultures, the word multiculturalism isn't a loaded political term. Maybe it's just a part of everyday life. Take Brixton. This small area of South London has long been a cultural melting pot. That's a pot where cultures melt. I've come here to talk to three young musicians, Ims, Genesis and Wordsmith. When it comes to racism, is there less around now than in their grandparents' day? Wordsmith, how are you? I believe this is what the street handshake. I've seen it on MTV. Okay. That's the problem. Now he's confusing me. <laughs> how are you guys? You're right today. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I see that little thing there, right? <laughs> um, multiculturalism. What does it mean to you? To me, Britain, Great Britain. That's, that's that is it. Do you know what I mean? My my street, this estate. That's it. Do you know what I mean? All, all different people from all walks of life. If you go anywhere around this part of London, you ask a white kid of say our age, say between 18 and 25, a white kid, a black kid, an Indian kid, whatever, they're all going to pretty much talk the same. They're all going to be pretty much wearing the same outfits. They're all going to pretty much be listening to the same music. So it's a culture that's kind of grown up together. That is what multiculturalism is in this country. Yeah, man. Look, I grew up, you know, one of the few Asian kids at my school. Uh, wear a turban, don't know if you noticed. <laughs> um, normally wear kind of laid back colours like this. Don't stand out in the crowd. Um, and I found myself constantly, it, it affected my life. How do you feel, you regard yourself as British yeah. and Jamaican? Yeah. How do you feel walking down the street, people look at you, does it matter to you what they think you are? No, it doesn't, it doesn't, no, it, doesn't. it doesn't matter to me. It used to, it used to, but I think I've, in my whole mind personally, I've changed a lot, but um, it doesn't, I don't really care how people see me or how they perceive me or what they think I am. Why did it used to matter to you? Because I was more, I don't know, I just wanted to, people to know, yeah, that, you know, when you got that black and proud mentality, don't get me wrong, I'm still, I'm still proud to be black, but that's not just me, I'm not just black, you get me, you know what I mean, I'm a lot of other things past that, so that's not, that's not the, that's not the main thing that defines who I am. I mean, Wilson, how about you? How would you describe yourself? Well, I'm a white British, man. Some people, not me, might say, well, you sort of stopped being white now. You're just something else, you know what I mean? Because you don't sound white, you don't dress white. It makes me laugh, to be honest, man. I'm just a product of my environment. You know what I'm saying? I'm nothing different from anyone else, any other white guy around here, really. So, to me, I think it would be more unusual if hanging around with the people that I hang around with and living in the culture that I do, that I was like, hello, how are you doing? Yes, my name is Leon. You know, it doesn't ring true, so... I don't have any problems with my identity, where I come from, I know who I am. Im, there's a question I wanted to ask you. you. You're a Muslim, yeah? Yes. Islam's a whole nother big blanket to chuck over the whole yeah, argument. How it's have you known. found that? Um, it can be difficult at times, especially, especially now. I remember after the September 11th incident, I was walking uh, town centre, my hometown, Bedford, and um, I was asked to leave the country. Well, actually, Someone shouted across the street, leave the country, you 
I won't say it on screen, but yeah, and I was like, why? They're like, you're a Muslim, you caused, you, you caused that incident. Now it's, yeah, it's become more of a religious thing when someone does discriminate against me. Tell me, Genesis, how, how do you feel now when you see new wave of immigrants coming through? Looking back at it, man, it's like they're, they're where we used to be. Yeah. So you got to kind of you got to kind of show them you got to show them the same respect you would want, that we would want back then. You know what I mean? I know, especially Streatham Common round the corner. You've had a huge influx of Somalis, and I know some people that I know find it intimidating to walk through there. Really? Just because it's a different kind of people that they're used to. They don't have much experience with Somalian people, and that's where you know the whole thing of ignorance comes in. So, some of them are coming from wars. Like you talk to them about where they come from. You'll be like, nah, like, we think we got that bread, you know what I mean? Like, the police might shake us up a little bit or, you know what I mean, a couple of little gunshots, yeah? They're coming for wars. So, and they're coming over here to feed their families and to make life better for themselves. And I think that they should be allowed to do that, man. I'm really impressed by these guys' attitudes and their trainers. Because let's face it, it's not just white people who get uneasy about immigration and change can scare anyone. Oh, see, I scared you. For new immigrants, the same old struggle to be accepted in Britain is played out again and again and again, just as it was for my parents' generation and for mine. Last year, 140,000 new people became British citizens. They were given the official handshake at compulsory ceremonies like this one in Haringey, North London. I will give my loyalty. I will give my morality. To the United Kingdom. Here they're required to swear at the Queen. No, swear an oath of allegiance. I think that you knew that's what I meant. She looks good for a woman of her age, doesn't she? Tony Yuan Xiao Chang. Bektas Denison. Min Fung Lam. <laughs> Today, I feel great to see this day. Really? Yeah. Welcome to Britain. Thank you. So you're British now? Of course I am a British. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the happiest days of my life, I should say that. How lovely. Um, I actually found that really quite moving. You know what, this is a great country and um, it's nice to mark your, um, your passage into citizenship. To be um, to be reminded of uh, what it means to be British, because I think it means a million things to a million different people, but it means something. And um, yeah, I found that awesome. So fighting back the tears slightly there for a minute. Thank you very much. And cheerio, <laughs> cheerio, <laughs> cheerio. <laughs> cheerio. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Yes, have a lovely day. Thank you. We should make them say that at the end of ceremonies. Cheerio to the local mayor. And I should co co. <laughs> I interviewed the British National Party and you bless. <laughs> I want to have a party! Um, well, they don't have much cake and balloons there, I've noticed. Um, and I think, I mean, it's very interesting. Get into the mindset of the enemy is what I think. And I discovered um, that uh, apropos of uh, their kind of political philosophy, the BNP very much feel that there's an adherence on their part towards some sort of didactic, conceptual reconstruction of uh, white Anglo-Saxon culture that, that ought to pervade every aspect of uh, a contemporary life. That's what they think. What they say is, That's what they do, Kenzie! <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Sure.